food. People crave you. People want you. People need you. I think it was Aristotle who said, Man must have sustenance to sustain being a man. Who are you? Who created these dishes? I want to know you. Noodles, humble, delicious. Tacos, not afraid of street food and being a little bit quick on your feet. And carrot cake, you've got a sweet side. I want to find out who you really are. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel or if you're new my name is Orla and today I thought I would cook some food inspired by the Netflix show You because why not cook for an imaginary murderer? Now before you're all like oh you know he's a serial killer he doesn't deserve sustenance you know, even serial killers have got to line their stomachs. So I thought today I would choose a starter, main and dessert inspired by the series You to serve to Joe and to see what he thinks of it all. Um, all of these recipes will be in the down box below and they're all vegan. Um, so, you know, no more murder on my watch. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm wearing a nice floral jumper to counteract the murderiness. And yeah, let's jump into recipe one. Okay, so for dessert, I thought I would do a cupcake inspired by one of the cupcakes from Love's Bakery in season three. Um, so in the scene where she's flirting with Theo, the guy she has an affair with, uh, he comes in, he's forgotten his wallet, and he's like, I got no money. And she's like, oh, gotta give you some cake, but not that kind, I'm a married woman. Um, and then she says, would you like chai and walnut, I think? or carrot cake and he chooses the carrot cake so this is my interpretation of a carrot cake muffin or cupcake and yeah let's get on with the baking I have all the ingredients lined up ready steady cook style and we are going to begin um, and create this amazing cupcake okay so we're going to start with the milk you want 240 milliliters of this and you actually want to make it into buttermilk um, by the way this always makes me laugh as soon as I start pouring the liquid it covers the numbers, so I can't even see what I'm doing. Um, so you wanna make this buttermilk, um, which basically means um, adding some acid, whether that's lemon juice or vinegar, and this basically helps, uh, how much is it, 240? It helps the cake to rise, it reacts with the bicarbonate of soda, but I'm not gonna do that, and I'll explain why. So, what I mean by that is, let me find it, so if you have milk, obviously I use oat milk or whatever milk that's vegan, um, that's gone off, hear me out, um, it's technically curdled or gone sour, obviously you're not going to want it in your coffee or on your cereal, but in baking it's essentially buttermilk, which basically means um, it has more of a potential to make your baked goods rise a lot, so if your milk has gone off and you open the lid, and it makes a little fizzy sound, never fear, put it in a baked good. If you do encounter the tom tits, don't come, don't come for me, please. Um, but I've done it lots of times and it works really well. And plus, we're cooking for a serial killer. You know, if I can't give him fizzy milk, then who can I? Hey, I heard that. Okay, so now we want 60 grams of oil, um, which has thrown me a little bit because I didn't think you measured liquids in grams, but we're gonna go for it. So 60 grams ooh, of oil, oh lord, <laughs> oh my god this is shambolic, <laughs> right, so what's good about this recipe is it's an all in one so you can just all bang it in the bowl which is the kind of baking I like to do, um, okay so we need 210 grams of flour, you could sift this but to be honest I like to live my life in the fast lane, Pe pedal to the metal, so I'm not going to do that, but, you know, feel free, whatever lights your soul. Okay, we're going to do 80 grams of caster sugar. Oh, oh, that was a chunky lump, wasn't it? Which is what I'm sure everyone wants to hear when they're about to eat a meal. Chunky lump. 30 grams of brown sugar. Now you want to add your spices. Don't do what I do nearly every time I pick up my spices and add garlic powder instead of ginger. Uh, you know, I know he's a murderer, but I'm not going to give anyone a garlic cupcake just yet. Um, I tend to wing spices, kind of put in as much or as little as you like. Obviously it's a carrot cake, so it does have to be a little bit spicy. So I'm going to put in some ginger, cinnamon, um, what else, and some nutmeg 
Uh, so yeah, go ham on the spices if you like it a little bit spicy. A um, bit more cinnamon. Okay, we're nearly there. It feels like I've added the whole entire contents of my fridge to this bowl. Uh, you want a pinch of salt, half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, and then half a teaspoon of baking powder. And then all we need to do now is add 60 grams of grated carrot. Nearly said grated apple then. I need a rest. Oh my. <laughs> Slow-mo for that lost fallen soldier. My, my dog will eat that. My dog will enjoy that little bit of carrot. You see, I could have used a plate, but, you know, see aforementioned comment about living on the edge. Didn't really want to do more washing up, but by the time I pick up all this carrot debris, then, uh, you know, probably would have been a better idea. Okay, and finally, we want to stir all this together to make a lovely batter. Okay, so when your batter looks suitably mixed, um, it is quite a wet one. She's moist. Um, we are going to put it into a um, cupcake case. So, because I am uh, doing my best every day in life to be zero waste, I just oil these and don't use cases. But, you know, if using cases brings you joy, um, go ahead. Um, so I'm just going to use my little handy dandy pastry brush with a little bit of oil and then dollop this into the trays. There we go, already made a mess. So I'm gonna do like two tablespoons per, don't worry, we can wipe all that off, it's no biggie. You could also add like raisins to this if you're, um, if you're a masochist, um, or like chocolate chips, although I'm not a massive fan of chocolate and carrot together, um, but you could do, you could do. Um, so these are gonna go into the oven for 12 to 15 minutes um, at 180 degrees C, which I think in Fahrenheit is like 4,008. Hello, Bobby. Sit, smile, good boy. I wolf you, I wolf you, I do. Okay, so while they're in the oven, we're gonna get started on the cream cheese frosting. Um, so you could just have these as they are, or you could make this delicious cream cheese frosting. I don't know which one I'd prefer. Um, so this is really easy, it's a combination of cream cheese. I really like the Violife creamy original flavor. They can't say cheese, because they'll get sued. Um, this is really nice, a really nice vegan uh, cream cheese. I'm going to use some flora, any plant-based butter will do. Um, and then of course some icing sugar and a little bit of vanilla, which I had a minute ago. Just chilling out near my flowers, having a little chat. So I'm going to mix these up. I'm going to put the quantities in the down box. Um, but uh, yeah, this is going to make a really nice creamy topping for our cupcakes. You want to soften the cream cheese a little bit, um, especially if it's straight out the fridge, um, and make it a little bit more whippy. Usually I'd use a new spoon, but um, I'm going to use the rest of this butter anyway, so it is no big deal. Oh, my dog's back for more carrot. And if you have one of these annoying, <laughs> oh, this could go onto some dodgy part of the internet. Definitely somebody has got some sort of fetish for, for watching this shit. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try and open this, but it's one of those annoying sprinkly ones. Job's weapon of choice, well, one of them. Watch me cut a finger off live on cam. Again, probably another fetish for somebody out there. Okay, we got there in the end. And I actually still have all my fingers intact. 
Um, okay, so we have icing sugar and then we want to add a little bit of vanilla. Um, and again, you can never have too much vanilla, so just bang it in. The good thing about frostings and icings in general really is as long as you're happy with the consistency, um, the kind of ratios don't matter so much, I think. But again, I'm not a professional baker, so Barefoot Contessa, Nigella, don't come for me. Delia, Delia's in the wings, ready to have a go. Um, so you wanna just whip this up um, until you get a smooth consistency. Okay, we have our cream cheese frosting. Looking very creamy, looking very cheesy, and looking very frosty. There are a couple of lumps in it, um, but again, cooking for a serial killer. Hey, I heard that. Um, and I'm sure Joe won't mind, you know, any lumps in it. And by Joe, I mean me in a hat. Spoiler, it was me all along. Comment down below if you got tricked. Um, okay, so this is looking very nice now, a good consistency. I'm going to put this back in the fridge. Obviously, then when the cupcakes are finished and cooled, we can frost them. Um, but putting this in the fridge will just make it a little bit um, firmer and delicious. Um, so yeah, frosting is a done. So, pit stop. I'm having a cup of mint tea. Uh, mint tea. Um, yeah, I, I would love to know what your thoughts are on the latest season of You. I know there's been a lot of mixed opinions. Um, hopefully this is going to go online on the day that part two of season four comes out. So obviously there's no spoilers for that in this section because I haven't seen it yet. Because funnily enough, I'm not a time traveller. Um, but I've really liked it so far. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like the main character, she's annoying. But I think it's good to see somebody kind of challenge Joe and not just be like, huh, for his BS the whole time, you know? Um, and also I think it's one of those series where I'm glad that every season is evolving and changing because, you know, the whole like, falls in love, stalks a girl, gets together with her, she realises he's a serial killer before it's too late and he kills her, trope. Not only is like getting a little bit old, um, but it's just not that inspiring anymore, you know? So I like the fact that now he's being kind of, you know, uh, stalked, as it were, and um, tracked down. And I'm excited. I have a couple of theories as to who it could be. Um, but I'm excited to see who it is in the big reveal. Um, I mean, I could just go outside and ask him now. Um, but he's not in the mood. He's not in the mood to, uh, to talk yet because he hasn't eaten. So, um, you know, hopefully after he's had his lovely three-course meal, he'll give me a few spoilers. Who knows? some time later so our cakes are out of the oven they have cooled they are looking amazing fit for a killer so i'm gonna ice these now um and oh sorry i was slightly inappropriate sounds mm. so let me get a nice little plate off of my shelves here i'm gonna put it on this nice little glass plate um you know could be used as a weapon um if you wanted to. Okay, so fingers crossed, if all went to plan in terms of the um, the greasing of the trays, these little bad boys should just pop out. Oh yeah, have a look at that. These are looking very cute. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is just plop on some of our cream cheese frosting. So it's firmed up quite a bit in the fridge and then gonna put a little sprinkler cinnamon on top. You could top it with a few nuts as well if you liked. Um, I might do that. I'll see where the day takes me. I'm worried there's been sirens in the background for most of this video. Um, maybe they're on the lookout for Joe. Um, how many references am I gonna say for that before it gets tiring and old? Answers on a postcard. Right, I'm gonna frost my lovely little buns. Um, I'm not gonna be too precious about this because the frosting is quite, um, I mean, it's not runny runny, but it's not really like buttercream, stiff peak level bakery standard, which is fine. We're not professionals, never claimed to be, but I am gonna, yeah, this is definitely, it's not as whipped as loves, but Victoria Padretti, if you're watching this, These are looking good. So, I'm gonna add a sprinkle of cinnamon on top. You could add some nuts, etc. But, you know what? I'm just gonna go with the cinnamon. Um, Joe's nuts already, so doesn't need any more nuts. Um, and these are looking really, really cute. Can't wait to get my teeth into them. Okay, so 
were to start to uh, amuse the bush of uh, our favourite um, psychopath, we are going to make a taco. So this is based on one of the episodes where Love tries to find Joe's perfect bite and they go to a taco truck and it doesn't actually say what's in the taco. Um, I did look at some footage and I couldn't even see inside the taco. So I'm going to do my own variation of something I would like in a taco. How many times can I say the word taco? So I've got some black beans cooking on the stove right now and then I have a range of delicious ingredients to put inside. So we've got our black beans with some fresh garlic, mixed herbs, salt, pepper, chilli powder and a bit of cinnamon. Um, and these are ready now. And look at that steam. So really this is just a matter of assembly. Um, I'm going to use a nice yellow plate for this one because yellow is the colour of happiness um, and it makes me feel good. Um, so we're going to do that. We have these little mini tortillas which I'm going to toast to get them a little bit warm and crispy. If you can hear some crunching in the background, that is my dog. Um, I'm sorry, but not going to stop him eating because I'm not crazy. Okay, we have our delicious bean concoction. Bean. Bean. That was a really bad Mr. Bean impression. Um, we have some fresh sliced tomato, some mashed avocado with just some salt and lime juice. We have some jalapenos, or if you want to be a bit funny, jalapenos. We have some spring onion cut up. We also have some coriander which if you're looking for a very niche suggestion if you're looking for ways to keep herbs fresh keep them in a glass of water in the fridge they last a lot longer and then after you're left with the delicious coriander soup look at that tell you what Gigi Hadid would pay about 30 quid for that so top tip and then finally I have some leftover buffalo cauliflower wings um, which I had for dinner the other night this is just cauliflower breaded. If you want the recipe, I can put it down below. Um, let me know in the comments. Um, I'm gonna chop this up into little pieces for our tacos. Just threw a bit halfway across the room. That's all good. And then finally, some fresh lime, and if you like it spicy, which I certainly do, some hot sauce. Okay, so I'm only gonna do in one taco, because you know, we're trying to amuse this boosh. We're trying to tantalize him. So I'm gonna post this, and post this. Put it in the letterbox. I'm gonna put this in the toaster. Okay, so our lovely little tortilla is toasted. You don't want it to be super crunchy, but it does actually help it keep its form a little bit better this way. Um, and now we're just going to begin assembling. So let's start with our delicious bean mix. Going to put... This is the problem with the taco, isn't it, though? You don't want to overload it. Um, so we've got some of our nice refried beans in there. Um... To, should I just shove a whole load of cauliflower in there? No, let, let's be nice. Let's let's chop it. Um, so yeah, this is really good, this cauliflower. I eat them like dipped in barbecue sauce. Um, <clears throat> throat cracking. Uh, okay, so we have two pieces of cauliflower in there like that. as Just like that, as so. Words. Um, and now we're going to add a little bit of our avocado and lime concoction. This was quite a good avocado actually when I cut it open yesterday. So the avocado gods are on my side. We want to add a little bit of tomato. Again, see it's already getting. She's getting full. Um, a little bit of spring onion. Because let's be honest, if you give a serial killer really oniony breath, kind of helps his potential victims escape because they can smell him coming a mile off. Um, we're going to finish that with a little bit of lime juice. There's already salt in the guacamole, so I'm not going to salt the tomato. A little bit of coriander on top. I don't know whether to go jalapenos and hot sauce or both. I think I'm just going to go for some hot sauce right now. Um, and there we go. Our delicious leftover taco is complete. <laughs> the main course I'm going to do a bit of a bougier version of Joe's 99 cents noodles. So before they go for their perfect bite on their little food tour, which is just the cutest day ever, and um, my ideal day is just going around eating all the time. Um, so I do have these 
needles which are the same needles you find in like packet noodles and I'm going to show you a really easy way to spruce them up. Um, so they're going to be in a sauce which I'm going to show you how to make now but they have um, peanut butter goju jang which is a Korean spicy hot sauce which is so good, um, some soy sauce and then I'd normally use Chinese rice wine vinegar but I've run out so I only have your typical white vinegar but it will do for what we need so we're going to make the sauce and then coat the noodles with it you could leave it there but i'm also going to add um some vegetables so we have some chopped pepper courgette tofu and then a little bit of spring onion to top it with so let's get frying let's get cooking and um, my fringe has migrated position again we're going to roll with it we're going to have lots of continuity errors it's all good okay so let's get our noodles on first they only take a couple of minutes so i'm going to put one do you, what do you even call these ah, let's call them noodle biscuits um <laughs> Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below, what do you call noodle biscuits? Okay, so our pan is nice and hot, so I'm going to add a little bit of oil and get the vegetables going in a blow-in. And then I put my tofu to one side. And the key, I think, to get really crispy, nice tofu and vegetables is just leave them in the hot oil and don't really touch them. Let them do their little thing for a little bit. Um, and yeah, while that is going in a blow-in, I'm going to make our sauce. So the sauce is really easy and you can change it for your tastes, whether you like it a little bit nuttier, maybe you're a nutty chick. Um, or if you like it a little bit spicier, you can have more gochujang. If you can't find gochujang, feel free to substitute it for another type of hot sauce. Um, you can't really go wrong with this sauce, to be honest. It just depends on what you like. I don't tend to measure anything, as you can probably tell in this video, apart from when I bake. So I will put down some rough measurements, but feel free to like judge it to your tastes. So let's start with the gochujang. So I'm going to put in a, a big teaspoon. And then I'm going to put in a splosh of vinegar, accurate measurement. Again, like with most things in cooking, you just want to make sure you're balancing like the sweet with the salty, the bitter with the spicy and all of that good stuff. So, um, you know, you can do a little taste test as you go along and see. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a big heat tablespoon of peanut butter because hashtag gains. And I can smell my tofu is crispening up, so let's give that a little zhuzh. You know, you want your veg to look like, like this. You know, don't be afraid of a bit of colour, a bit of caramelisation. Add to the flavour. You see, like, look at that piece of tofu. Focus. So I'm going to turn that heat down just a little bit and go back to the sauce. I'm going to add some soy sauce, this will add a nice salty kick and then just to make sure it's kind of balanced I'm going to add a little bit of maple syrup for sweetness um, this doesn't really make the sauce taste that sweet it just kind of makes sure that the spice doesn't, you know give you too much of a uh, I was going to say sting ring then and then I realised I'm doing a cookery video and I have just said sting ring so <laughs> It just helps milden it all down. Milden is not a word. I am an English teacher. Right, so you want to mix all this together until you have a nice paste. Give it, you know, a couple of minutes um, because you do need to mush down the peanut butter. And a little trick, you know, never say I don't do anything for you, is to add a little bit of the noodle cooking water. Just the splash. Um, this will help to kind of meld everything together and make the sauce uh, a lot smoother and then when we put this in the frying pan to coat the noodles because there's already a little bit of the starch from the noodles in this sauce it helps the sauce cling to the noodles and make it all nice and well distributed because nobody wants a dry noodle but here is our sauce it's okay if you've got a couple of chunks that'll be from the peanut butter um but yeah this is delicious it's salty it's sweet it's spicy it's got a little bit of a uh, twang from the vinegar and I'm not going to lie, I could drink it in buckets. Okay, so we're at the stage now where I add just a little bit of garlic. I have this frozen stuff because, you know, I'm only one woman. I can't do everything. So, you know, having long nails, having garlic smelling your fingernails. Tell you what, doesn't feel good. So, 
I'm going to just quickly fry that. It doesn't need too long. And I'm going to add the sauce to the pan. And again, if you're not going to bother doing like any of the veg or the tofu, you can just add this sauce directly to the drained noodles. Um, it just depends on your, you know, level of effort that day or what you want to make. So you're looking for something a little bit like this. And then what we're going to do is without draining them, just bring your noodles over to the pan. You don't want them to be super wet, but as long as they're, you know, if they have a little bit of a, a little bit of moisture to them, it's still fine. And then pretty quickly, now I'm going to turn the heat off. You want to add the noodles and just twist them around the pan, coating them in that beautiful sauce we've just made. And there's a few stragglers left in this pan and we don't like to waste any food here. So I'm going to add the rest of them. If you find the sauce is sticking, feel free to add a bit more water and then you can cook that down. And now I think we are ready to plate. Okay, and now you can top it with some of your spring onion and then our lovely coriander living plant. Look at that coriander soup. It's brewing people. It's brewing. And there we have, voila, my elevated 99 cents noodles. Okay, so we have our starter, our taco, our main course, our noodles, and our dessert, our lovely carrot cupcake. So I'm thinking we should bring in our, uh, our old mate Joe to come in and test the food and see what he thinks. Wow, this looks and smells incredible. Where do I begin? I guess like with all the best stories, I should probably begin at the beginning. Squeeze on some lime. She knows me, she knows I like it zesty. Wow, let's hope she hasn't laced this with poison, but <laughs> you wouldn't do that to me. Hmm. It's crunchy. The coriander adds a nice little taste and reminds me of my mom. Delicious, but a little bit bitter. Mmm. Those beans really taste good with that cinnamon. Wow, you created this for me? I'm blown away. It's good. And on to the main event. These peanut satay spicy noodles. Wow, they taste good. Although they'd really fuck Benji up if he accidentally ate those. You can really tell the care and attention you put into making this meal. You love me. Wow. <laughs> that feels good. <laughs> yeah, I never really had parents, but... Wow. Spicy. Creamy. They remind me just of you. I could eat this dish forever, in fact, I could eat this dish forever, sitting, side by side, with you. Oh wow, this is incredible. It's good. And finally, for the pièce de résistance, this carrot cake. Wow, you can smell the spices, it smells exactly like those Tuscan summers you spoke about when you were a young girl. Wow. All I dream of is you and me finally eating cake together. Like my favorite philosopher Dienze says, I keep on hoping we'll eat cake by the ocean. This is just sublime. It's good. Well, that was enlightening, wasn't it? Um, I'm gonna do a, a proper taste test now. Um, so let's start off with the taco. I have no idea what this tastes like. Mm -hmm. That was a big bite. So it's really delicious. The refried beans are really 
and the texture of them is really good um and then the breaded cauliflower buffalo wing with the coriander and the lime like it's spicy but it's not too spicy like my nose isn't running you know it has good flavors the cinnamon and the beans really adds a little um and it's really good definitely definitely recommend and now onto my easy 99p noodles what i love about these i make these at least like once or twice a week is that really you can kind of bung in everything or anything from the fridge um any leftover veg you have that looks a little bit like it means you know that it's on its way out you know um and as i said before you don't even need to put the tofu in it really because you have protein in the peanut butter uh so yeah really really like that get some coriander mm. <laughs> it's honestly one of my favorite meals it's spicy and peanutty and it has like a really creamy texture to the noodles and like you could just scoop them up on their own without any of the other bits and they'd already be delicious but with the crunchy tofu and the fresh pepper i don't tend to get like the kind of bell pepper i get the long peppers because they're a lot more flavorsome um so that's really really good and i love coriander i know some people have the gene where it makes it taste like soap uh, but luckily i don't have that because if soap tasted like coriander i'd be in a bar a day and finally we have our spiced carrot cupcake um with a nice little perfect serial killer shaped bite taken out of it mm -mm -mm. it's so nice it has all the spices of a carrot cake um <clears throat> it's very moist inside i think we need to bring the word moist back not everybody hates it as much as they claim this cake is moist okay she's moist through and through um it's really delicious the cream cheese frosting is not too sweet it has like a nice creaminess to it and all in all i think this is a three course meal fit for a queen let alone a serial killer from a netflix original tv show so i hope you enjoyed this video it was a lot of fun to film and to eat i'm now gonna finish the rest of these for my lunch but let me know in the comments down below if any of these dishes look good to you uh, what would you cook for joe would you cook for him at all um let me know what you think of the latest season and if you like this video i'd love if you liked and subscribed uh, that'd be really nice and it would stop me doing a murder um although i do need to stop making so many serial killer jokes in this video because i'll probably get demonetized um which is not ideal so thank you for watching and i hope to see you again around these parts soon take care bye Ho ho ho! Easter egg! Easter egg!